All right, so some o'clock, here we go. <laughs> so I'm covering solving rational inequalities algebraically. So I do have a video that goes over how to do it graphically. And you can use the graph to kind of check your work and what you've done using algebra. So a rational inequality is where we have a rational expression and then instead of an equal sign, it's going to be an inequality symbol. We've already seen linear inequalities. We've seen absolute value inequalities and we saw polynomial inequalities. So now we're looking at rational inequalities. And in order to solve these, you need to have one side zero and it's gotta be the right side in order to really um, interpret it correctly. So you'll have some polynomial over another polynomial, which gets you a rational expression. And then the right side is going to be zero. And this is the same thing that you need when you do polynomial inequalities. You have to have one side, the right side, be equal to zero. So this is it's a lot of steps here for sol solving rational inequalities. Don't try to write this down. <laughs> I would just, you know, when I send out the recording tomorrow, maybe just make a note to save this or maybe take a screenshot or something. If you try to write all this down right now, it's going to take you forever. There are, it seems like a lot of steps. It looks like a lot of steps. It's not as bad as what it looks like, but it's actually very similar to what you do when you're solving the polynomial inequality. There's just a few differences. So I'm going to demonstrate what we're doing. I'm not going to go word for word through here. Use this as your reference. So our first example, we have x plus four over x minus one, and it's less than or equal to zero. So we've already got one side, that right side at zero. And so what you do is you take your, you, the numerator and the denominator and you set those both equal to zero. If there's something to factor, you factor first, but we don't need a factor here. So we take the numerator. Oops, now I actually hit black ink, not helpful. <laughs> so you have your numerator and you set that equal to zero. Oops, x plus four equal to zero. And then you set your denominator equal to zero. So that's x minus one equal zero. And you solve both of those for x because these are going to give us our points of interest. So for the numerator, I'm going to subtract four for both sides, which gives me x equal to negative four. And for the denominator, you add one to both sides. And that will give you x equals one. So far, not too bad. <laughs> you just, you take your, your top, your bottom, you set them equal to zero and you solve. Now the denominator is always going to have a dashed line. And this is because we can never equal to zero in the denominator. So X minus one can't be zero because then we're divided by zero. So the denominator is always going to be graphed with a dashed line. The numerator, whether it's a solid or a dashed line depends on the inequality. So this depends on the inequality symbol. So we have a less than or equal to, and because it's equal to, this means it's going to be a solid line. So we're going to use a dashed line for the denominator value and then a solid line for the numerator value. And what we do next is we graph a number line. And we put these values that we solved for on our number line. And then one is a dashed line. 
and then negative four is going to be a solid line. And we have now split our number line into three pieces. So we've got three different sections here. And our factors, we're going to write horizontally. We're going to kind of um, make, I guess it's not rows here. It's sort of like we're going to have rows. So we're going to have a row for X plus four, and we're gonna have a row for X minus one. And then we're going to have at the bottom, X plus four over X minus one. And we're going to kind of put those results right there. So we've set up a number line and I've got three sections on the number line. And then we're going to have two rows above the number line and one below. And we're going to pick numbers in each section on the number line plug them into our three rows for X, and then write whether the answer is gonna be positive or negative. So we need to pick a number that is to the left of the number line on negative four. So negative five is a good pick, but we can pick any number as long as it's to the left of negative four on the number line. Then we need to pick a number maybe I'll make this work more like one, um, a number between negative four and one. So if you can pick zero, always pick zero. And then we need to pick a number that's bigger than one so we can just use two. So those, these are the values we're going to plug in for X. So let's start with negative five. If I replace X with negative five and X plus four, we have negative five plus four, which is negative one. So we get a negative answer. If I replace negative five with X and X minus one, we're gonna have negative five minus one, which is negative six. That's also negative. Then underneath it, you don't need to actually plug negative five into that expression. All you need to know is that you've got division here. And so we've got X, or the X plus four divided by X minus one, or a negative divided by a negative, and so you're going to get a positive. So you just have to know two negatives give you a positive. Then you move on to the middle section where we have X equals zero that we're gonna plug in. So when I plug zero in, x plus four, we're going to get zero plus four, which is four, which is a positive. When I plug zero in to x minus one, zero minus one is negative one, so that's a negative. And then we're dividing these. A positive divided by a negative is a negative. Then you move to the next section. We're going to plug in two. When you plug two in for X, two plus four is six. So that gives us a positive. Then we have two minus one, which is one. That's a positive. And a positive divided by a positive is a positive. So you're making what I call a sign chart here. And you plug them into the individual factors and then use the fact that you know the sign, you know how to divide things of signs, two negatives make a positive, one negative stay negative, and you get these signs at the bottom for the rational expression that we're interested in. So then you go back to the inequality symbol that we have. And our inequality symbol is a less than or equal to zero. So less than or equal to zero means we want the negative values. And so we're looking to see where did we get a negative value for our rational expression. And so that is in the middle here between negative four and one. So that's this section right here that I can shade in. This is where it's negative. And at one, 
It's not included, it's a dashed line, so that's a parenthesis. At negative four, it's a solid line, so that gives us a bracket. And so our answer is a bracket at negative four, and then we shade until we hit one, and then a parenthesis. And so that is the answer to this rational inequality. So your first step to recap is you take the numerator and denominator, you set them equal to zero, and then you solve for X, and that will get you your, the numbers that you're going to use on your number line. The denominator is always going to have a dashed line, and then the numerator, it depends on your inequality. And for a less than or equal to, it's solid. And then for less than or equal to zero, we're looking for negative numbers because we want the numbers that are less than zero. So you set up your number line with those numbers and whether they're solid or dashed. And then the top is where you put each individual factor and the bottom is the whole thing. And then you, do, you plug in numbers that exist in each section of the number line into each factor and determine whether the answer is positive or negative and write down the signs. And then the bottom part under the number line is sort of the result of the division that you have going on with those signs. And then you use that part to determine where your final answer is. Are there questions? Nothing that I should probably ask in a lecture. It's more out of band stuff. <laughs> I had a nightmare week last week. You can ask it when we're done going through examples. How about that? Yes. <laughs> okay, let's do another one. I only honestly have four examples here. So, because <laughs> these can take a while. So here we have something that we are going to have to factor. So we have p squared minus 2p minus 8 over p minus 1, and then it's greater than or equal to 0. So you want to factor the top. We don't have to factor the bottom because it's just p minus 1. But you're still doing your numerator equal to 0 and denominator equal to zero. So you'll see that you have to factor because you're gonna be solving. So our numerator, you have p squared minus two p minus eight equal to zero. So that's a quadratic that you ha now have to solve a quadratic equation there. And the denominator is p minus one equal to zero. So the denominator gets us p equals one, and that's gonna be dash because it's always a dash line for the denominator. The numerator here, we're going to have to factor. Um, so I'm gonna to try to factor. If it doesn't factor, you have to do the quadratic formula to get your two values. So uh, we generally don't try to give you ones that don't factor because doing the quadratic formula takes a long time. <laughs> So this does factor, it's P minus four and P plus two. All right. Bring it. So that gives a negative four times two is negative eight, negative four plus two is negative two. So we get P minus four equals zero and P plus two equals zero. And when you solve, you get P equals four and P equals negative two. Now, because we have a greater than or equal to zero part, the equal to part means it's going to be solid and we're going to be looking for our positives because now it's greater than zero. So you're going to draw your number line. And now we've got three numbers that we've put on here. We have negative two, we have one, and we have so we have three values instead of two like the other one. 
and one came from the denominator, so that's dashed. And then the other two are going to be solid lines. So how we're going to do this now when you have three things that you're going to set up is that you're going to have three things, <coughs> three horizontally above the number line and then one below. So you have to kind of make sure that this is tall enough. So we're going to have P minus four because that's one of the factors. So you're coming, you're taking it from the factored form. Then we have P plus two. And then we're going to have P minus one. And then underneath it is going to be the p squared minus 2p minus 8 over p minus 1. And then we want to pick numbers to plug in. So we want something smaller than negative 2, so we could pick negative 3. We can choose 0 between negative 2 and 1. Um, between one and four, you can pick two or three, whichever seems easier to you. And then you can pick five greater than four. I mean, you could choose decimals if you wanted. You could do 2.5 or whatever, but whole numbers are a lot easier to plug in. <laughs> so I always stick with whole numbers here. So when we plug in negative three, and I'm gonna start from the top to the bottom. So we've got negative three minus four, which is negative seven. So that's a negative. Then negative three plus two is negative one. So that's a negative. Negative three minus one is negative four. That's a negative. Now for the underneath part, you're basically multiplying and dividing. All that matters is how many negative signs do you have? So if you have an odd number of negative signs, your answer is going to be negative. So don't worry about actually trying to multiply and divide, just count how many negative signs you have above the number line. And then if it's an odd number below, it's going to be negative. So then let's plug in zero for P. So zero minus four is minus four, so that's negative. Zero plus two is two, so that's gonna be positive. Zero minus one is negative one. So now we've got an even number of negative signs, and so our answer will be positive. So you put a plus sign in between, or at the bottom there. Moving to the next section, we're plugging in a number between one and four, we're gonna use two. So two minus four is a negative, two plus two is four, that's positive. Two minus one is one, that's positive. And then we have one negative sign, that's an odd number, so we'll have a negative underneath. Then we're going to plug in five. Five minus four is positive. Five plus two, that gives us a positive. Five minus one, that's also positive. And then we end up with a positive. So once you filled in your sign chart, then you're looking back. We want something greater than zero. We're looking for positive answers. So we've got two sections here. Two sections where we are positive. So we've got a bracket at negative two, because that's solid, and then a parenthesis at one, and then a bracket at four, and then it's always a parenthesis at infinity. So when you write your answer, because you have two separate sections, you're gonna combine them with the union symbol. And so, it's going to be a bracket negative two comma one parenthesis union bracket four comma infinity parenthesis.
Any questions? My Zoom crashed. <laughs> keep up. Really long Zoom. <laughs> it's probably because you have all those uh, fancy things going on in your background. It's not Zoom. It's another program. Mm. That's OBS. Oh, okay. Oh, you're using OBS. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I also use OBS when I do fancy things. <laughs> Okay, let's move on to another one. So this looks simpler than the one that we just did, but it actually kind of has a trick to it. <laughs> so we have nine minus three X over X squared, and then it's less than zero. So we're gonna do the whole numerator denominator. So the numerator is nine minus three X equals zero. And then the denominator is going to be X squared equal to zero. So when you solve your numerator, I'm actually gonna add three X. So I have a positive there. We get nine equals three X. Divide both sides by three. And we get three is equal to X. Now, the denominator here is okay. When you solve this, you know, you would take square roots of both sides. And that just gets you x equal zero because well the square root is zero equals zero but we have to be careful here the x square means that it shows up twice because of that square so we're just we're you're going to have to consider that when you make your number line As far as the number line goes, we're going to use dashed line at zero. And for the numerator, it's a less than zero. So the less than means this is also going to be dashed. And then because it's less than zero, we're going to be interested in the negative areas. So on my number line, we're going to place zero and three. And then they both end up having dashed lines here. And then for above the number line, we're going to have nine minus three X. And then we're going to have basically the x squared part because that's sort of what it is it's so it's not really i mean you could write x minus zero if you wanted to put it in factored form um and then you would literally write x twice but really it's an x squared in the bottom so you're you can write it as your x squared because it's not really factored that's just how it is um the nine minus three x if you wanted you could actually take your three equals x and rewrite it um but if it's something that we didn't factor if we didn't need to factor we usually write it exactly as you see it so because we didn't need to factor either one of these things, we just write it exactly as it shows up in a rational expression. And then underneath, we're going to have nine minus three X over X squared. So um, I need to pick a number less than zero. So negative one is a good one. I need a number between zero and three. One is always a good one. It's super, super easy to plug in one <laughs> you know that's i always try to plug in the easiest ones and then 
we'll pick, pick four because that's larger than three. So how about I will let you guys fill this in now. So for our first kind of column here where we're plugging in negative one, what are the signs for nine minus three X and then for X squared? And put them in that order. You can put in the chat or say it out loud. The first two, one, one, negative one and one, I think are positive. Okay. For which one? The nine minus three X or the X squared? Oh, are we doing? Uh, I did all of them. I, I solved, <laughs> I solved for, uh, I just do F of that point on the interval and I just check if the answer is greater than or equals or greater mm. than less than zero. Because the, uh, I wasn't, it took me a while. Now I understand how the, uh, the sign chart works, but the book's explanation was not helping. Me. <laughs> yeah, I do it very differently than the book does it. The book <coughs> does like a true false kind of thingy. Yeah, I was like, not sure if it was the signs of the terms or the signs of like, and until it took me forever to figure out it was the numerator and the denominator. Like I, I had to like make that connection independently because the book yes not yeah the, yeah I, I i write plus or minus and i do it this way because that's what i was taught when i had to do stuff like this in calculus so and it just makes it more obvious to me so let's see so for negative one you get a positive when you plug it into nine minus three x and then you also get a positive when you plug it into x squared so you have to remember that you are actually squaring that x so that will then give us a positive below. How about when we plug in one? Six, the answer is six and it's greater than zero. Yep, so I'll get a positive. The other interval is negative. I haven't solved it, but negative. Ah, yes. So yeah, if we're doing only the nine minus three X, we get a positive, a positive. And then when you plug in four, you're going to get a negative. Yeah. For the x squared, we're going to get a positive for all of these because when you square a number, you always get a positive. And so then when I fill these in in the bottom, I get a positive, a positive, and then a negative. So it is possible to have like two sections that are next to each other with the same sign, a positive and a positive. Like the previous examples we had, oops. We had them alternating signs here. And the first example also ended up having them alternating, but they don't always turn out that way. You could have a positive next to another positive section. Now we're interested in the negative section only, so we don't care that there's two sections that are positive there. So we only want the negative because we're looking at less than zero. And so we've got just one section here, which is basically greater than three. So you're gonna have a parenthesis at three, and then you go to infinity. And your answer, could totally change if this was instead greater than zero, because then you're looking for the, the positive areas. So your answer really, I mean, the sign chart looks the same no matter what your left side is. I mean, basically, if you have nine minus three X over X squared, your sign chart's gonna look the same. What you use for your answer depends on that inequality symbol, because that tells you what part of the sign chart you're interested in. Any questions? Okay, so this is my last example here. So we've got four over 3c minus 8 greater than 1. 
So here we have to have the right side be zero. So we have to do a lot of manipulation before we can actually set this up because we don't have the right side zero. So we have four over three C minus eight greater than zero. We need to subtract one from both sides because we need to have that right side be zero. So we have four over three C minus eight minus one is greater than zero. Now, the other thing we need is we need to have one single fraction. So in order to use what we're doing here, we have to get a common denominator. So this is one of the reasons why we learned how to add and subtract rational expressions. So I basically have to, that one, I can just take that denominator and repeat it. So it's gonna be four over three C minus eight minus a three C minus eight over three C minus eight. And so now we need to combine these. So I'm gonna just kind of go up here. So it's four minus three C minus eight. And I like to write it in parentheses like that. And I don't, let me make this denominator in the center. So I don't try to do the subtraction in my head when it's a minus like that because it's very easy to mess up your signs because people will do the minus three C but they'll forget that you're also subtracting a minus eight. So I will actually write it combined before I do the subtraction. So we have a common denominator. And so now we're going to have four minus three C and then that's gonna become a plus eight. And then we have three C minus eight in the denominator. And then four plus eight, we're going to end up with 12 minus three C over three C minus eight. So we have to distribute this negative. And so that negative times a negative that becomes a positive eight. This is the a spot where most people make a mistake because they forget to distribute that negative and then they end up with a four minus eight and then you get a negative four when it's actually a 12 there. So that's why I, do, I write it this way. I literally write down what I'm doing or what, it's, what I should be doing in my head. So that way it, I make sure that I don't make those sign errors there. So now we've got this 12 minus 3C over 3C minus 8. And now we can actually do what we're doing for all the other ones, where we do the numerator, the denominator, and all of that. So I have a slide for this. We have 12 minus 3C over 3C minus 8. And it was greater than 0. So for the numerator, we have 12 minus 3C equals 0. And then the denominator is 3C minus 8 equals 0. And so now we're going to solve each of these for C. So go ahead. You guys can type that in the chat and go ahead and solve these or say it out loud. I'm eight also going, whoop. <laughs> eight over three and four. Eight over three and four. That is correct. I had a, a little jerk when I was writing my three. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it went off. <laughs> so yeah, we got C equals four. And then let me make sure that I'm showing all of my steps for everybody. And we are going to get a fraction, but that's okay because we don't have to plug the fraction in. We just have to know where the number is located. <laughs> so we have eight thirds and four. So our denominator here is always dashed. 
So I just always write that down. Dashed denominator, think of that, you know, letter D. And then because we have a greater than is equal, the, or the greater than zero, the greater than is dashed. And then that means it's positive that we're looking for. So we're gonna set up our number line. And for whatever reason, I put my negative in the wrong spot. Um, so I know where four is, let's see, eight over three is smaller than four. So I have to kind of get to figure out, well, where are these numbers located, especially when you have those fractions. So eight over three is 2.67-ish when you round it. And let's see, so these are both gonna be dashed lines. Okay, so we have to pick three numbers to plug in. What numbers do you want to, want to choose? Zero, three, and five. Sounds good to me. I definitely would have picked zero <laughs> for sure. Um, yeah, if, if our number eight thirds is 2.67, it makes sense to then use three. Then you don't have to do any decimals, though sometimes you're forced to use a decimal. And then five, that makes sense. And so we've got 12 minus 3c and 3c minus eight. I'm hearing fireworks. The game's not over yet, is it? The KC game? That wouldn't be, it wouldn't be over yet, right? <laughs> Probably not. Because last time when they won, there was huge fireworks. Okay, my phone says it's still Q3. So I think somebody or just people are getting excited, I guess. And they're just they're doing the fireworks a little early. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're legal. Yeah, that's right. Because when we lived in Illinois, we'd always smuggle, we'd always smuggle them in over the border from the- Yep, yeah. Oh yeah, when I lived in Illinois, we got them from Indiana because I was in the Chicago area. So uh, that's that's where we got our fireworks. <laughs> I was in the part of Illinois everyone forgets about. The the south part that doesn't exist? No, the western part. I was right next to <laughs> Iowa and Missouri. Uh -huh. Born in Iowa. Yeah, nobody, nobody knows about those parts of the state. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so if we plug in zero, for 12 minus 3c, that will give us 12, so that's positive. And then when you plug zero into 3c minus eight, you end up with a negative, because that would give you negative eight, and then a positive divided by negative is a negative. Plugging in three, you do have to do a little bit of math. Um, that's gonna be 12 minus nine, which is three, so that's positive. Then we have nine minus eight, which is one. So that's positive. So we're gonna give us positive. And then let's see, 12 minus 15, that's gonna give us a negative. 15 minus eight is a positive, And that's going to give us a negative there. So we want the greater than zero, which is the positive part. So that's, I almost put an arrow instead of parentheses. So because both ends are dashed, we have parentheses there. And that's gonna be between eight thirds and four. because that's where the positive part is. So we're gonna have parentheses eight thirds comma four, and then parentheses again. Any questions? All right. So this is uh, solving rational inequalities. You will have one of these, only one, on the, on the quiz this week. Um, and I think on um, the final, because we've got the final coming up in a couple weeks. 
Let me check. Yeah, you've got one of these on the clear. Oh, I actually don't have the final in my notes here. Well, it is very likely you have one on the final. <laughs> For the quiz, you only have one of these, and it's the first one. So you'll get that out of the way. And then the rest of the quiz will be mostly um, inverses and the logarithm and exponent stuff. And then if you are someone that has to go take calculus, this will show up again. So just kind of keep your notes handy because you'll be doing these kind of charts in calculus. Um, specifically, when you start looking at second derivatives and first derivatives, um, and you start trying to find inflection points and maximums and minimums, you basically make a sign chart. Yeah. So. All right.